Okay. And so what, what I've done was um, I've taken everything that was uh, given to us over time. And, and, and a lot of these resources are still there uh, in, um, well, they're actually in, in the MIB elite group. Um, there's a whole bunch of resources in there on how to use the hourglass scanner. Um, I just did this right up a few weeks ago, it would have been maybe six weeks ago or eight weeks ago, um, as a, a guide to use the hourglass scanner. Now, this is not, this is, this is really intended for uh, beginners who are just trying to learn a few things. One thing is obviously look for, look for good setups and ensure that you're trading with the trend. This really ensures that. Um, also, it, it gives you entry points, so you're not having to figure that out on your own. Um, and also, it teaches you patience, the strategy. By following this, it teaches you patience, and patience is really key um, when you're new, particularly. Uh, and so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly. I, I know for you, the guys, uh, for everybody who's been on here many times, I know it's um, you're sort of repeating uh, some of the same old stuff. But I'm just going to fire through this just for the new guys, just because um, I think it's important uh, that if they trade with us, they know what we're doing. Uh, so, first of all, in the guide before trading, things to consider is check your folders. Now, if you don't know what your folders are, you go to this address here um, and you can find this guide in the, in the, um, in the discord, by the way, I think it's under, I don't know, it's under guide somewhere. Just message <laughs> me if you can't find it. Um, so what we're going to do is check out our folders. So you go to this Forex factory, I've got it um, favorite under my favorites list there bookmarked. Uh, and this is going to tell you any news that's coming out uh, today uh, or any particular <laughs> events that may cause the, the markets not to move as they normally do. Um, basically, yellow folders are okay. Orange and red, you, you'd consider uh, possibly not trading those pairs, particularly at those times, um, but you possibly consider not trading them for the for the day um, because it means uh, particular things, especially if you see if someone's speaking, um, mm -hmm. there's no one speaking there, but um, CPI could change things. Um, so I'm seeing quite a lot of red and orange folders, which is not particularly amazing. Um, but obviously we're still going to trade with you guys today. I'm, I'm only trading demo when I trade with you guys at the moment. So, um, so we're still going to give it a go. And I would uh, suggest that if you're going to trade with us, but, uh, I mean, I'd, I would say, uh, you know, lower your risk or trade demo today. Um, because there's quite a lot of red folders there. And uh, I mean, it's covering the Euro, the USD and the CAD, and CAD which <laughs> and GPB has got orange. So basically all of our uh, pairs have got a um, you know, little happening. bit of something going on. But um, now there's, if you look, if you go into the academy, there's, there's quite a few educators which will go a little bit more in depth on those folders. So, um, you know, I just, yeah, I'm not going to go too far in depth this morning. Um, so, then you also want to check your market session times. Um, and at that same website, if you get a market, you scroll down to the bottom here, you can look at the session times. And depending on the style of trading that you're doing, uh, you know, it can vary when you want to trade. For me, I'm looking for solid trends that are already trending, uh, particularly with hourglass. And and usually trends can change when the market when a, when a market opens or closes. So basically. Um, the rule that I've got on here is to not trade uh, within, it's not written here, where is it? Uh, it's down a little bit further, but the, the rule is to not trade within, uh, I think it's 45 minutes uh, of a market opening or closing. Let me just jump back to there. So here you can see uh, Sydney one open, and this will be should be displayed in your local time. This is our local time here. Um, so London session closed over an hour ago. We've now, you know, new, if, if anything reversed or things changed, it should be sort of solid now and heading in one direction. And so that's good for us. So I wouldn't trade closer to here. And I wouldn't trade on this side either. There'd be a little gap in here where you can trade. Um, so that's something, you know, that you can, if you, if you are trading a different strategy and, and an educator tells you different, then do what the educator says. Yeah, like this a lot of people like to trade opening bell, which is obviously the beginning of the session. Um, but for this particular, um, hourglass strategy, like we say, that's just what we've noticed and it's really worked well for us. So, okay. And then the other thing is obviously read your notes from previous trading sessions. Um, so if you're not tracking the trades, you're showing us. Ah, oh, oh, thank you. Shoot. Oh, no, I only see your document. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry, guys, I keep doing this. It's, every time we trade with you guys, it's very early in the morning and we just wake up and I keep And you're it. so used to just flicking your screen. I am. Can you guys see that now? Can you guys see the Forex Factory screen? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to go through it all. I, I'm, I'll just quickly but just jump show them where back. you're seeing that. Just show them at the bottom there. Yeah. First of all, uh, folders. So these are the folders that I was talking about. You can see there's a whole bunch of colored folders, uh, red, orange, uh, are no good for trading. Um, so yeah, it's, it's possible that the market won't move the way that it should today or within, within those timeframes of those, of the news events uh, down here. If you click to market up there, sorry, market, uh, then you can see these are the session times when they open and close. Um, so we're now in the New York session, London session closed just over an hour ago for us. So we're good to trade now. So we're not trading, you know, within that 45 minutes, either side of a market opening or closing is when I find that things can turn direction. Mm. Um, so, uh, what's next? Uh, so read your notes. Uh, so if you're not tracking your trades, you should be, um, you should definitely, uh, let me just see if I've got, uh, there we go. Okay. I opened up another live, just a small live account. Um, and next week onwards, I thought I'm going to trade. I'm going to start trading on this live account with you guys. Um, obviously I would have to trade throughout the week to keep it growing as well, but I thought, um, next week onwards, I'll start trading this account with you guys. It's currently only got $188 in it. Um, I did some trades last night and, um, and I, I did a couple of, uh, Forex, uh, FRX trades on there as well. Um, and I thought I'd incorporate that cause I, we use binary cent and you can do both. Uh, and this is where you'd write your notes. So you would say, you know, like I won this trade three minutes. Um, and, and you'd say, uh, Particularly if there's something, particularly if the trade didn't go well, you would say something like, um, you know, uh, did not have enough time or did I possibly enter too early? You know, you write down these mm -hmm. things. Why do you think that you didn't win the trade? And you're going to write these notes in there. And then before you trade next time, you're going to come back to those notes and then you're going to read those notes because you don't want to make the same mistake twice. And that's just a really great way to make sure mm -hmm. that you're, you're, you know, keeping track. Okay. Um, and so if you're not tracking, then definitely do start tracking, particularly if you're with demo. Um, do you have a link to your tracking template? Uh, yes, they're in the Discord. Um, they're all in the Discord. They're under a channel in there somewhere. Uh, Otherwise, it's still in the it might be elite group. Oh, eh? I've got a lot of Discord things going on here. I won't go in it right now. Just message us directly and we'll, we'll guide you. Um, OK, so while trading, things to consider. Okay. You want to be patient. <clears throat> You want to be patient. Sometimes you need to come back in 15 minutes. If the market isn't aligning, particularly with this strategy, sometimes the market will, uh, will not align for, you know, five, 10, 15 minute period. And you just got to come back to it. So trade with the trend, always trade with the trend. If you follow all these steps, you will be trading with the trend. Um, find a pullback to trade on or look for breaks, breaks and retests. So if you have learned or you're in the academy right now, you'll know what breaks and retests are. And basically this strategy essentially, uh, it automatically and that's why it's great for for newcomers it automatically uh puts in your you know it automatically makes you trade a break and retest essentially um and uh check for obstacles and resistance zones that can block your trade um so there's we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more but um basically obstacles and resistance zones um, if you're, if you're new to this, that may not, may not make sense to you, but one of the main obstacles to check out for is your EMA, the black line that's running through here. Um, if you're about to take a trade to go up and you're below the black line, uh, then you, you'd consider, you know, depending on how many things line up, you may not take that trade because, or, or you'd possibly extend your timing because it can act as a, as a resistance zone and you might not, it might not break through that zone within the time uh, frame that you're trading. Um, all of these little lines that automatically populate support and resistance zones for you. And so if you're taking trades, you want to make sure that you're taking trades that you're, um, you know, you're not going to be blocked by any of these. And I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure if it makes hundred percent sense with you guys. Uh, in the previous sessions, I've sort of broken this up, all of this information up into three separate videos, um, which you can actually go back and rewatch. Um, but now we're just going to fire through all of it in one session. Any, if there's any questions or anything, Gemma can answer them. So just fire them away. Yeah, in the chat. I also just She's dropped got them the um, trade tracker in the <laughs> chat. So if you've been wanting it, you can grab it now. Okay. Uh, look for support and resistance zones. Uh, they're the best entry points, especially uh, around the EMA. So these things are going to spit out uh, support and resistance zones, and those are going to be our entry points. And I'll show you how they work in a moment. And if you can get an entry point 
um, that is close to or on the EMA, that's even better. Um, so this here is actually, it's going in the wrong direction, but for example, this is an example of a break and retest. Um, so you've got this, if I remove this here, hide the drawings, you'll see straight through here, you've got this resistance zone here. So it's probably around about through there. So I'll get rid of that one. So you can see it's actually broken through here. It's bounced on top of it, broken through it, bounced underneath it, a little break breakthrough there. Now it's gone through and it's it's possibly gonna re so it's broken and it's possibly gonna retest it. Now I wouldn't trade this one because it's against the trend, but that's just an example of how hourglass automatically gives you these breaks and retests. Um, consider your trade timings based on the current market movements. So I normally do three minute trades. Um, but sometimes if the market's moving really slowly, you'd increase that possibly to four or five minutes. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can, I mean, I'm 90% of the time I'm trading three minute trades. Uh, and sometimes if the movies, market's moving really quickly, you can try two minute trades. And this is where your tracking comes into play. So depending on the time of day that you're trading, you want to try and trade at the same time every day, um, particularly with if you're sticking to the same strategy. So if you're going to try the strategy out, don't just try it for a day here and there at different times. Mm. Uh, you know, try it, be consistent. Try it for, you know, I would say actually a couple of weeks. Mm. Be consistent. A month. You, you know, go in at the exact same time every day, stick to your rules uh, and, and do it on demo. And with demo, I mean, I want you to try and take as many trades as possible if you're new. Um, and then when you're sort of ready to transition to a live account, you'll open up a separate demo account, um, which you're going to treat as a live account. And you'll only take maybe three trades, four trades a day. Make sure you try and hit your percentage and you'd stop. So you can have two demo accounts, one for trading as much as you want and one for practicing a as a real account. And, and you want to trade at the exact same time every single day. Uh, and that way you'll get a better idea of what sort of timings works for you at that time. You might reduce your timings to two minutes and through tracking your trades consistently, you can then get a better idea of what is and what isn't working. If you write two minutes on your trade uh, track spreadsheet, you know, here I put in the, the trade timing. So I uh, forget about those. Those, those were Forex, uh, FRX trades, um, but three minute trades, trade timing is put in there. So you can imagine if I did uh, 50 trades, at three minutes and I write my notes in here, it's going to tell you, it's going to tell you, you know, how, uh, you know, you, what is, what is and what isn't working for you. Um, you know, if you, if you're consistently writing in here that I needed more time, then you might look at consistently increasing your time. Um, I hope that makes sense. Chuck, Chuck a one in the chat, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, and then, so where are we here? I'll find a like to trade. Trade timings. Okay, refresh your scanner often um, because the scanners. Uh, you want to keep an eye on this little timer here. Um, it'll spit out new trades uh, every five minutes. Um, but if that goes past five minutes, like if you see that go to six minutes, see there, it's just spit out a new trade. Um, sometimes it can get stuck, and you just have to hit refresh. Um, but it's it's good after every single trade or while you're in a trade, go back and refresh uh, just so that you're getting the correct information because sometimes they can get stuck. Okay, so we're going to get into the steps for taking some trades this morning with you guys. Um, so currency strength is the number one thing that we start off with. So we try and find pairs with 15 to 20 points difference. So if I go back to the hourglass scanner, by the way, for hourglass, it's it's the Liberty scanner. And then uh, so Liberty. And then if you go into strategies, it's the bottom one there. So click hourglass and that'll bring up the scanner here. So <clears throat> what step number one being look for currency strength. The currency strength is listed on the right hand side here. We're looking for something with 15 points difference, 15 to 20 points difference. So um, this one's 30 for the bottom number and 44. So that's 14 points difference. That's not too bad, um, but that's showing that it's in an upwards trend at the moment. Uh, this one is good. We've got 44 and 58. So that one should be in a solid downwards trend or a, you know, a current downwards trend. Um, and so what you're going to try and find those pairs with that difference. Um, basically, the stronger the, 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 uh, the pair with the stronger number is which way it is pointing um, or which way the uh, current trend is going. Uh, and then the EMA line color. So this this color here, this big thick line here will actually change color depending on whether price has gone above or below it. So if I switch to these, um, it's basically an indicator of where, where the current solid trend is as well. Basically, everything I'm teaching you is 
or showing you here is, is to ensure that you are trading in a very solid trend. Um, so you can see here where it crossed over, the line went red. And when it crossed back up, the line went green. And the rule is essentially, if you're, if you're, going, if you're trading up or you're going for calls, you want to make sure that this line is green um, and it'll be sitting below you. And if you're going to go for puts, um, so down, you're going to make sure that this line is uh, above you and then it's red. I'll see if I can find one here somewhere. Not many there, this one possibly. <clears throat> yeah, so there we go. So you can see it's come down and it's going for puts. Uh, and so you'll only go if, so this one's a great example. So we've got 50, more than 15 points difference uh, and the red line is above us. So in this scenario, we'd start going for puts. Uh, step number three is the trade call out arrow direction. Now, this the, the arrow in this scenario here is telling us to go for a call. Um, so although everything else is telling us we need to be going for a put. So because this spits out new trades every five minutes, um, you'll find that this will, you know, it'll eventually spit out a, a trade uh, for downwards, and um, and then and then we'd only take the trade if it's going for a downwards trade because everything else is telling us that we're good for downwards trades only. Um, max twenty or is fifty also good? No, yeah, max, you can go above. You can go above that. So uh, it's minimum fifteen or twenty. Around about there is okay. Um, you know, if it's fourteen and there's nothing else to trade and it looks like it's trending, I'd trade it. But yeah, stick to fifteen and above, and anything above that is fine. So if it's trending massively, that's fine. Um, then the next thing, and I, this is a lot of stuff to go over in one session, which is why I didn't do it all in one session the first couple of times. So if you are new, you can go back into uh, Discord, and I think under strategies, uh, it's got a link to three or four videos which you can watch in a row, which sort of uh, sort of builds this up. Um, so number step number number four is um, you're looking for overbought or oversold. Um, look at the stochastic and the RSI. So these two indicators down here. Basically, if you if you can see how the market moves in waves, and this is just an indicator of uh, where the the market is currently. So you can see it moves up above the red line, and then it'll eventually come back down below the green line, and back above the red line, and eventually below the green line. And what you want to do is, if you're going for calls, everything is color coded for you. Uh, sorry, if you're going for puts, everything is basically color coded for you. You want this uh, to be above the red line so that you can take it for a put down. So, uh, you know, you, you'll have your red line up here. You'll have, uh, the currency strength facing downwards. You'll have a red arrow facing downwards and this bar here, because of that red arrow would also be red. And then you want this to be up above the red. And basically if it can be coming back down on the red, that's great. Um, so basically red, 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 red confirmation, you're going to go for a put, uh, Check for obstacles this is what we spoke about before. Um, if you were up above here and uh, you were going to go for a put, again, if I zoom in on this, you will see you've got your EMA here. And look at that. You see what's happened here? It's actually just bounced right there a little bit. It's, and there's actually a support zone there too. But it's just something to be aware of. If you were, if you were about to take a put on this trade, uh, let's let these people in. If you're about to take a put on this trade here, um, then that could be something that could be in your way and might block that trade or it might take a little bit longer for it to push through. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. It doesn't happen very often. Um, check higher time frames for confirmation. This is a little bit more advanced. Um, sometimes what you think is happening on the five minutes looks exceptional, but if you jump to the 15 minute time frame, uh, then you might find that the current candle on the 15 minute time frame uh, might be going up or might have uh it might be telling you something completely different and we'll see if we can find a live demonstration of that today we've done it a few times in the in the last uh, session so if we can't find one then just rewatch those but basically we try and find uh i'll just try and find a uh, okay i mean that that one was coming down quite nicely uh yeah, so if, if, but if I had jumped 15 on that one, uh, so that this is possibly an example. So on the five minute, everything's coming down, um, looking good. Like maybe that looked like a great trade. That was a great trade there coming down. Um, but if I switch to the 15, the 15 minute uh, possibly could be, you know, heading, 
heading to a uh, into a new candle shortly and heading into a resistance zone which would possibly mean that it would um, bounce back so this isn't a great example but sometimes by switching to the 15 you could see that oh that candle uh looks like it's about to hit a strong support uh and and it's about to open up a new 15 minute candle which means that it's going to go up uh and so just by reading on the 15 minute time frame you can sometimes see something different that you could yeah. couldn't on the five minute and that's a little bit more advanced i think if you're starting out uh just stick to the five minute just trade trade demo trade demo get into as many trades as possible because the more you do it it's repetition repetition and the more you see things the more you uh, make sure that you uh, follow up with your trades like if you if you lost it try and figure out why did you lose it uh, and definitely make those notes and, and if you and, and if you lost it see did it eventually come back down and how long did that take and would you have adjusted your trade timing maybe and could have won that one those are the things that you should be doing not just oh i lost that trade and, and walk away from the computer sort of thing mm. um, or jump straight into a new trade um, you have to hone the skill you can't just uh do it it's it's not uh it, there's there's so many tools and there's so many things that you can learn in this in the academy and there's so much support um but you have to put in the time yourself as well uh enter uh, at support and resistance is, is the last thing yeah. um so you want to enter at the support and resistance zones which uh which are given to you in the hourglass scanner so no just just want to know are you still using the volume indicator I never used the volume indicator. Um, I never ever used it, and I and I've had heaps of success without it. Uh, chuck a one in we the just... chat if you want me. I, I did it once live for you guys, and I think I won one trade and lost two. So uh, I, I haven't had. I don't think I've given the volume indicator enough of a chance. Um, Man, look at that I, drop. <laughs> but I work and I've traded well without the volume indicator for over a year now but so a lot of people do like it so that's exactly why this I did, is one of those things where you've thing. got to figure out what, what works, works for best you. for you yeah you know and then if it works good best for you then add it in and use it for us um just, just yeah just curious i've been on um, and off yeah yeah Have, is, yeah is everybody yeah i, I don't know if you've if you had heap, heaps of success with the volume indicator then then chuck chuck a two in the chat um I'm happy to to try it out again today. I I normally don't trade with it, but I'm happy to do it just to give you guys an example of. I'd rather have um, because I have seen a lot of messages of people who have had great success from the volume indicator, where I myself uh, have struggled with it. Okay, let's get into these charts, okay. man. So uh, what's the time? Well. Thirty minutes of this. Oh my gosh! All right, this is just a starting guide. You can incorporate this into your strategy. So keep learning, stay consistent. Don't break these rules unless you're implementing something from uh, an educator. Keep your trade timings consistent within your session to ensure you know what is and what is isn't working for you. Um, you know, so some people might swap and change the timings because they think it's not working during that session. Stick to one thing for one session so that you can get an idea of what that time of day is doing and, and how well it works for you be consistent so that you can change things over time um now we've allowed rollovers in the past i now only allow one rollover uh, if you're on last week's session we were able to withdraw from binary cent um so slightly larger so we will keep you posted on how that goes so i'm still using binary cent for now and we're only allowing one rollover if you don't know what a rollover is you'll see uh, you might see it shortly we'll get into that um track your trades yep uh, set daily profit goals, which our track, track and trade spreadsheet does. Um, can't get there for some reason. There we go. <laughs> so uh, I've set for this account, I've set a daily win goal of 4% and stock goal of 3% with a weekly compound goal of 6%. Uh, and then it spits out your, uh, your compounding over time. And uh, it also tells you what your win percentage is. So yesterday when I traded, I was up 5.3%. I took four trades and I won four trades, which is 100% win rate. Obviously, that will adjust as you go. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile doing that. Uh, take it as a win when you walk away on a bad day. Okay, mm -hmm. so you should be really proud of yourself. And this is something that me and Jim are keep trying to encourage each other because that is the way to protect your profits is to walk away when it's not going well because not every day will be a winning day. Today might be a bad day. Um, the markets are different every day. So uh, definitely if you're a trading demo, that's fine. Just get as much practice in. but. When you move to a live account or move to that uh, live demo account, 
treat it like real money walk away don't don't get caught out that's how you stay in this for the long long haul mm -hmm. to really see those successes you that's know? right that's right don't focus on the day don't even focus on the week you know mm. uh, we're not focused on we're not focused on these on on each day if you go to here um this is week these are weekly goals you know you might get a couple of red weeks and then you might get five green weeks. Mm. So, and then that's, that's, that's two months. So if you're focusing on the day, just one day, then you're going wrong because yeah. you can have, it doesn't matter how good the trades are. You can have losing days. You can have mm. losing weeks. We've had losing months. If you have, <laughs> I mean, Gemma and I have, uh, we've, we've made a lot of money, but we've, we've had hard months. Yeah, man. Um, you know, and if you watch some of the educators, they say, if you haven't lost six figures, then you don't know what you're talking about. You know, for us, uh, we haven't quite lost that much no. yet, um, but we've lost a lot in the in the recent market. And it's really um, hard to not let that affect you, right? But that's why this tracking is so important. And even to have important. someone that you can talk to, because it's like tracking that and being like, you know what? It's just part of it. Just keep going. We're just sticking to our risk management. This isn't a quick get rich quick scheme. We're not here for one day. We're not even here for a week. We just keep on going. Yeah. So and it's it and that's it's a weekly loss. It's a monthly loss. If you're tracking, if you know what your 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 trade uh, winning percentage is over time, then you don't get so down about that mm. little loss for that week. Yeah. Um, because you know that it will turn back around and that you're overall uh, in profit. And that's the important thing. So yeah. don't get stuck on the day is my point. Don't get stuck on the one trade. Don't get stuck on the one day. Uh, be consistent. Don't get emotional your next session and just get back into it. Do it like a, like a robot is what one of the educators used to say. Um, yeah. and then that's it. Uh, I think that's it. Remember every trade can be perfect, but a, a trade can be perfect and you can be spiked out. Um, don't risk more than, uh, you know, 2% or 3% per trade. Um, don't focus on the day. I've already said that. Ask for help when needed. The MIB elite group and well, the mentors the Discord, really. and the Discord. <laughs> oh yeah, and the Discord. Um, everyone is there to help. So if you're getting stuck or something's not clicking for you, reach out to somebody. Reach out. Put it in the chats because um, you, you're not going to get anywhere. Just and don't feel own. like your question's dumb or something isn't valid. Or <laughs> honestly, like at the beginning, that's how I really felt. Like we got ahead as we asked those questions and. You know, it's those little things that really help. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Chelsea says this morning was not a good session, um, but taking my loss and going to do better tomorrow. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, and Tyrone says one more day, one more trade. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Like a robot. That's right. I haven't seen Tyrone say that. I, I'd love to get more into vector games, but um, what... Uh, Brandon Boyd and Josh Lee are bringing out their scanner Ooh, soon. On the 1st of July. And I'm really, hopefully. really excited. Uh, because I, I, I'm, treat, I'm teaching Hourglass, or I'm trying to help with this strategy, not to get everybody to jump to Hourglass, because in, our, in fact, I kind of don't want people to. I'm good, I've gotten so used to it, and I use it you know, quite religiously. Um, but the problem is, is that uh, there's not that many educators that, uh, that use it anymore. So I'm quite excited that um, Dr. Josh Lee and Brandon Boyd are bringing yeah. out this other one. And because and they were using this, I'm hoping it's going to be similar. similar. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but once it comes out, obviously we will give it. Yeah, a we'll good give it a go, go and, and I'll see if it's actually something that I that I want to continue on with. And if it is, then then we might trade with that one. We'll see. Okay, um, let's get into these charts. As usual, guys, if you're in the team and you are trading with us, let us know if you see some good currency pairs. Chef JPY. Um, looks like we are setting up the mm. Chef JPY. Shift it by this morning. Come on. <laughs> okay, so we'll get currency strength going in the right direction. Uh, we've got uh, the arrow, which is green. This is green. We're actually um, we're above that uh, the green line there. We're over um, sold, and uh, so this should be an upwards call, and it should be. Six five four possibly plus ten six five four. I'd love for it to come a bit lower, and this is moving very slowly. Very see how slow this is. It's moving very slowly. So, um, ah uh, yeah, Chef JPY. Yeah, pocket option is horrible. 
um, with Payout some of the payouts, just, like yeah. uh, this one's always 60% or above. Um, but um, just if you're if you're trading, don't don't trade live on that. Then 20% is not worth it for a live trade. That risk to reward ratio is not worth it. Do never. No, I never never trade anything below 60%. Um, now I'm going to enter this one. Six five four. I'm going to do an entry in. I'd like it to Wait, come back down there and. It's moving so slowly. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna increase my trade timing, which I don't normally do, but because this is moving so slowly, I'm gonna go for a five minute trade on this one, and I'm gonna enter now. All right. Um. Someone just asked him. So, with the payout percentages, just show just show up on the side of the screen here. So, can you see here those percentages? That's your payout on return. This is your yeah your return. So, um, it'll be different for each broker. Um. So, and it'll fluctuate throughout the day. So, NZD USD seventy five percent is that's great. So seventy five percent or above. That means if you risk a dollar, you'll win seventy five cents. Um, but it's just not worth risking a dollar and only winning 20 cents because you, you, it'll take you so long to get your percentage up. And if you lose one trade, you lose just, you know, let's just say you, you win five trades and you've made a dollar, and then you lose one trade and you wipe it all out. That's why that, uh, that yeah. percentage is very important. Um, it's funny that I entered this, I, <laughs> You're I like, I'll, I'll extend my time. Because it's moving so slowly and then suddenly and it starts it's moving quickly. Fine. Um, Always the case, eh? Okay. So, <laughs> is anybody in on this trade with me? Let us know. Drop some twos if you're in this trade. Yeah. yeah, what, what nice. time did you guys do? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm right by going a little bit longer. Um, now, uh, five I, minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, just five minutes. So now, guys, in my in, if you're new, don't swap and change your timings. I do it because I've done this for a long time. Okay, you need to uh, stick to something consistently. Um, come on, keep it pumping. I'd like to see it get above this area here, so you can see there's uh, some resistance here. If we can get it above it, then it should bounce on it, and then I know we're safe. Right now, we're still kind of we have to wait and see. It's going so slow. Mm. Um, we started with pocket options, <laughs> but we moved to binary cent because we wanted to use rollover. Can I just show you? Sorry, this is an example of an obstruction to a trade. So we entered the trade down here. Now the the obstruction is quite a while away, so it's not so it's not so bad. But you can see here it's moved its way up to that EMA, and look what's happening. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. If this EMA was a lot closer here, uh, then it's a sketchy. It, it doesn't always work out as well. So it's just something to be aware of. So if that EMA is really close to where you're entering, mm. possibly don't take that trade. Um, I'd probably look for another one because. Um, it's very hard to gauge the timing and know how long it's going to take to break through. It looks like this one's breaking through, but you saw how it bounced on it, right? And if you were very close to it, just one little bounce, like oh, it's doing like right now, now yeah. one little bounce could cause you to get spiked out. Yeah, so cool. that makes sense. Drop a one on the chat if that makes sense to you too. Clear. If you have no idea. Nice. What I'm about. Yeah. Okay, let's see how we're at that. Okay. And Chuck cleared in the chat if you cleared. Um, I've still got a little while to go. Oh no, don't you do no. <laughs> yeah, I think if I had done my three minutes, would I would have, have, I would have cleared, cleared it. That, yeah. But yeah, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Oh, rollover, yep. Uh, so rollover with binary scent is the ability to extend the time of your trade if needed. So uh, I'm trying to steer away from rollover as much as possible at the moment. Um, I used to allow myself two rollovers. So basically, if I put in a trade for three minutes, um, then before the trade ends, I can actually extend that timing by clicking a button here. Damn. Damn. Damn see, see, don't change your three minutes. Don't change it. <laughs> don't, don't change, change your time. Uh, well, you know, I made a call based on what I was seeing. Yeah. And, um, but let's just see what happens. Let's, let's give it a little bit more time. 
Uh, yes, it does cost you to roll over. It adds thirty uh, percent of the cost. So if you bet, uh, if you if you put in a, a dollar, you it would, it would increase it to a dollar thirty. And then the f- different brokers have different uh, rollover rules. Uh, with binary cent, it uh, it adds initially I think it's fifty percent more time, and then thirty percent more time there on all. I can't remember exactly. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's going to be close. Oh, I, hope, I hope some of you guys cleared this. I, I may not. <laughs> Don't you know, pump it up. Come on. Oh, oh, no. oh hey. So timing, trade timing is really important. I normally, 90% of my trades, I do three minutes, but today I just saw it was just so slow, so I decided I'm going to increase it. The reason why I did that is because I'm trying not to utilize rollover. So normally I can do three minutes and I can increase my yeah, time maybe just, um, yeah. and maybe I'll just do that for the session but for some of you that don't have rollover you wouldn't be able to either so hey um, let us know what you guys just nice with with five. Five. yeah cool. it looks like it's just bounced back up so yeah. you guys might be all good let us know yeah let us know if you cleared if you didn't clear just uh yeah just let us know as well you know uh I hope that you're all doing proper risk management and broke even, broke yeah. even. <laughs> okay Nice. Right. Well, well, let's see if we can find another one. Breaking evens a win, right? You've lost nothing from your account, so. But you've gained experience. That's right. <laughs> That's true, though. Can That's you true. tell we're uh, optimistic people? You have to be. Uh, now, uh, Chef JPY, we've just done, and it's actually dropping back down. I mean, you you could re-enter this. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you guys about, which I haven't included in this, are these lines here. Oh yeah. And and this this here acts these lines and this here, um, the Ichimoku cloud. Um, I can't pronounce it. Uh, people seem to pronounce it differently. Um, but these lines here are pretty important. When you see the cross, then you generally find it'll go it'll go in a, in a trend for a little while before it crosses back over. The red um, should be in front. Um, So if you're going for calls, the red should be at the top. If you're going for puts, the red should be at the bottom. And it operates like the DeLorean scanner. And it's not ideal to enter a trade, even if everything else is lining up, if these two lines, like if this red was coming down and crossing over the blue, then that tells you of a possible reversal happening. Or, you know, so it's not ideal to enter these trades. Um, Oh, look at that. Look at that. Damn. Man, maybe we should have gone a bit longer. <laughs> so there you go. You know, it is, uh, it just is what it is. We knew like everything is lining, lining up for a up. great trade, yeah. um, but it's just that timing. And depending on the market on the day, that it's just that timing. Anyways, so the good thing is, is that, um, you know, we, we, the, the hourglass scanner is doing what we want it to do. It's given us some um, um, great entry points. Now, here, here we go. This here. See how it's been supporting on this EMA? It's bounced on it, bounced on it, bounced on it. It's mm. now actually breaking through it. Um, if this line were cutting back down through this blue, mm. I would not take the trade because it tells me that it's possibly changing direction. Mm. So you can see uh, what happens here when the red line cuts through, bang, comes down. And then what happens here when the red line cuts back through the other way? It goes back up. And here, a little bit of a cut back through there, but then cut through up, cut through up. You see, um, I, I hope that's making sense to you guys, mm. but um, this one hasn't cut through yet. It's kind of leveling out a bit. We've got a slight obstacle in the way here, but that's quite a lot of pips there. So I am possibly going to take this trade. Overbought, overbought. We've just entered a new candle. 179 would be great. What is this? Uh, GBB is one of our red folders. I'm just going to check the 15 on this one, see what's happening. So we've got a brand new 15 minute candle. I think we're in for a good trade. I'm going to do a three minute call and I'm going to get in now. Okay, so Euro GBB for three minutes. Um, let's see what happens. Insane. Looks like it's already touched. So 179. Sometimes these numbers don't match up. So yeah, we're actually above that, but that's fine. 
Let's see what happens. Ah, I'm not getting fixed time. Drop a one in the chat if you're in this trade with us. Woohoo! Oh, I'm oh, get a drop. That's right. That's right. Sometimes they do a little pullback. That's fine. Come on. So the 15 has come down to this same support area here, and it's been pretty consistent with its red, uh, blue, red, blue, blue, red, mm. you know, and so we had a couple of reds here. It's coming down basically. Hide the drawing. Go to the five minute. Yeah. So there's heavy, you know, there's, there's a heavy zone through here. Now your support and resistance, right? Um, they're a zone. They're not necessarily a, a line, but if you put a line through there, just try and get as many touch points as possible. One there, one there, a couple here, slightly below. Um, you know, it's the zone that you're looking at for support and resistance. Um, and so it's basically. through there and so we've broken through and now we're retesting so that's that's what i'm seeing without the scanner but luckily the scanner does the work for you and it chucks in these support and resistance zones here anyways and um looks like we're looking good are we looking nice Let us know if you cleared that one. Double clear. Double nice. clear. <laughs> That's not Dwayne, like, is it? Double Dwayne. He's not on. Dwayne, Dwayne, are you on today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dwayne's normally like doubling his account in our sessions. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, Katie, what does double clear mean? Did you enter twice? <laughs> Oh, you cleared, or did you clear the previous one? Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not part of the rules, Katie, but that's okay. At least we won. <laughs> okay. All right. So we find another one. How but see how these time? markets are like, you're, you're hitting it, and then it's like, boom, dropping, and then you're hitting it and moving quite. Well, that, that was, again, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, it's hitting that. Yeah, it's coming up here. EMA. But, you know, like, this one's a, it's a, I think the markets are going to move quite volatile today because of uh, all those lead because of all of these folders here. But but hey, we're not doing too bad considering <laughs> all the news that's oh. out today. Now you can actually break them all down, but we're not going to no, get into no, it. No, Who no. wants to do one more trade? One more. We've got ten minutes. So Drop it two if you want one more. Okay. Cool. Okay. Da -da -da. Euro USD, it's flattening out. Oh, these markets are consolidating. Well, it's fine. Like sometimes, yeah, Christian actually loves sometimes trading consolidation. Sometimes <laughs> I like it when you get a. This is not a great example. No. I like it when you get a consistent flattening out. Yeah. Because then you, you can you can enter it. here and you enter here and you enter here and you enter here. Mm. But if you're following the steps that I've given you as a new person, you would never do that. Um, <laughs> but sometimes on on our real account, I've had. You know, ah. such quick sessions because it's like bang, 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 and uh, and then you're in and you're out. It's like uh, Dr. Josh Lee and Brandon Boyd. They're like, oh, we're the thieves in the night. You just want to get in, get out, make your profit, yeah. and get out. And that's one of the key things is when you've made your profit, get, get out. out, yeah, get out, um, because you don't want to kill keep it, pushing it, and kill your profits. Um, mm. Now this. That's not in the right. That's not enough um, points there. So first thing I'm looking for in my eye is going for the um, the points difference. Yeah. So that's not enough there. This one here is uh, yeah just enough, but it's 
at the right, you know, because because I'll be going. I know straight away with the mm. this is going to be for a put, and I can see right now it's at the bottom of its wave, so it moves in waves. It's at the bottom of its wave, we want it to be at the top of its wave mm. to go for a put. So that one's no good. We'll wait for another couple of minutes on that. Uh, that one's no good. USD Chef. Um, now this one here. Same thing. Well, it crossed over and it, oh, came, it completely crossed over, came back up. We've had it cross mm. back down now, which is good. Um, the Ichimochi cloud can also be another confirm. It'd be ideal if it was still completely red. Like mm. if you can see red, 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 um, and have it pull back um, to one of your uh, resistance zones and this be oversold. If everything's red, 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 and you have it uh, and you're in that pullback up towards a resistance zone, then that can be a good a good trade to take. Um, anything that shows green, essentially, uh, like this cloud here, is telling you that possibly, uh, you know, it's it's changing direction. And there's some dojis. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot going on here, but um, it, we we have had it cross back over. Um, I think if it does make it way its way up to here. The thing, the great thing about scalping is, you don't need to be an expert about at reading in the long term. Um, you just need to. Can you answer that question about the packages? I don't know. You Thank just you. need to. Um, uh, you just need to get that little three minutes to clear. So sometimes, even if you're trading, you know, if you accidentally trading in the wrong direction, um, if it's hitting that resistance, you just needed to bounce, and you just need three minutes to clear. So that's the great thing about scalping is, um, I. I find I found that you don't need to be um, you don't need to be as in depth because um yeah and liberty is included in the elite package yeah and this is liberty but it's the hourglass strategy inside of liberty okay so when you go into liberty just make sure your uh, drop down is hourglass refresh your scanner yes somebody sorry you was that USD CAD that we were just looking at. I don't know if it was, but that USD CAD just dropped nicely. That was great. Um, okay, let's find another one. I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to find a USD trade. Chef it was. Or was it USD Chef? USD Chef. Oh, not yet. So we're still here. Let's see what it does. Uh, USD Chef 097. It's coming up above. Uh, 097. USD Chef. Oh, we're at zero nine five. Oh, uh, what's our timing like? Three minutes. I'm going to take it now for a put. USD Chef. Mm. I'm in at zero nine six. Uh, zero nine six. Now I don't like the green cloud, uh, but the red is still leading, um, and these dojis could possibly mean a reversal to the upside, um, which you know, which is not what we want. But I'm hoping just for a quick bounce, uh, you can see we've got um, these wicks being created. And so I'm hoping that we're going to create another wick <laughs> and that we're going to drop. Let's see. So let's just see how we go. This one, yeah, I mean, it's a three point trade. Everything else is saying uh, we're in the right direction. So we just wait it out. Ah, uh, I didn't check the 15 on the side. Five minutes to go on the 15. Um, the previous candle did create a large wick, but not many wicks being created, so who knows? Only five minutes left on it. There we go, there's that wick formation. But hopefully it holds it. Come on! Like a part. Drop some this twos a, if you're in it. This is a good sign that we've got the red cloud forming again. Um, and everything else is, is showing that it's going in the correct direction. So I like seeing that. That makes me happier. Um, and this is just going to be about that timing. Hopefully you guys entering a little bit later than me got a better entry. Just need to break through this area. Down below. Oh, it's bouncing on it. Man, she's jumping today. All right. <laughs>
Come on. I'm a gangster. <laughs> Why we play this song, but it helps. Snoop right? Dogg. <laughs> he is the best trader in the world, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, we're a delusional flat. man. What's we're it going to do? We're flatlining. It's either going to spike. No. Uh, come on. Give us our drop. Hopefully you guys got a better entry than me. Um, by entering, usually you guys will enter in after me. Um, Drop it. This is way too close for comfort, right? Way too close for There we go. But if it breaks through this area, it will drop because it's just hitting another support there. And there you go. There you Clear. go. Is, it just needs to break through this area and then you should see it drop. And that's, you guys should that's clear what we got. if you entered in after us. Everybody cleared? Nice. All right. Now. Thanks, Snoop. Yeah, thank you, Snoop. <laughs> Snoop is the man. He always helps us out. <laughs> okay. Well, I think. I tried, I think we tried to cover, I mean, particularly if you're new, I think we tried to cover too much in one session. That's why I broke it up into three sessions. Um, and, uh, Sorry. yeah, I, I have been saying I'm going to make re Ooh. remake Sorry. some of those videos uh, for you guys, but I've been kind of holding off cause I've been waiting for, uh, Josh Lee and Brandon Boyd's scanner to come out yeah. to see whether I, um, whether I want to invest more time into this um, or whether I possibly want to move to the new scanner uh, and trade that with you guys. Um, I trade different styles, right? So we've got a couple of different uh, trading accounts. So I do some uh, Forex trading. I trade with trading view only. So basically naked trading with just uh, support and resistance uh, and uh, basically Rico strategy set up, but I don't trade Rico strategy. Uh, <laughs> and and obviously hourglass uh but S basically if i've if i've been doing uh if I, if, drop. if I haven't been doing uh very well uh sometimes i'll come back to trade hourglass hourglass is where i started and that's where i learned to trade um and it, which is why i think it's a great place to start if you're brand new and because it just it, it sets everything up for you um and then you just get a bit of feel for the market and then eventually as you learn more education, so don't take everything that I learn or the, everything that I'm teaching you as as all be all education. No way. We're just here to show you that this is how you piece it together live. Um, you don't have to use the hourglass scanner, uh, but just uh, it's just to give you guys uh, live in action, see how we piece it together. And then you guys go back to the educators and watch the educators. And I can't stress this enough because I, the last thing I want is to ruin your chances of success by us doing this, by somebody just jumping in and, and um, you know, just using us as educators because we're not educators. So I just want that to be clear. I love doing this for you guys and with you guys, and I want to continue doing it, but I don't want um, people to, to hinder their own education. Um, jump onto the educators go live, do once a day minimum. Um, and uh, be consistent, guys. Be consistent. Don't don't let one day get you down. Mm. Don't let one day get you down. Stick to your rules. As if you're using your live demo or your live account, you know whatever it is your rules are, stick to them consistently. Do it to, like literally. I would. This is harsh, but don't come back to me if you haven't stuck to it for thirty days consistently. Um, and just do smaller risk, smaller amounts, so that your account can last thirty days. Um, ideally, you should have tested it in demo for 30 days before moving live. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like the educator says, if you haven't lost six figures in trading, well, I mean, they have. Uh, Gemma and I have lost, you know, on, on, on certain weeks, certain months, <laughs> um, you know, we, we've lost, uh, you know, five figures. It's been some rough, rough times. Um, but overall, we're up because we're consistent and we just keep at it. So they're wanting to know what your trading view <laughs> indicators are. Oh, I just use, it's just Rico's. It's Rico's. If you jump on Rico's strategy, um, Rico's. And also I've, I, I've tried, I've traded recently just because the DeLorean scanner, um, DLO hyperdrive has been quite popular and I like to sort of see what's going on. Um, I did that a little bit, um, but not, not on our live account. I just did that just to practice. Um, and I quite liked hyperdrive, but, uh, I think you, if you're trying to do too many different things at once, it's hard to sort of stay consistent um but if you jump on uh rico's yeah rico actually has a session where he teaches you exactly um what 
<laughs> yeah, I love doing repro strategy. Awesome way to learn to pull your own oh, without a scanner. Look at all yeah. those previous lines put in there. Wow, <laughs> man. <laughs> um. Yeah, so because basically I do Rico strategy, but just on a very short like time micro, frames. Like this yeah. is on the four hour chart right now. So if I go to the five minute, um, except for I want to be, uh, here we go. So basically I use the same, this exact same setup as Rico strategy. Um, uh, but I essentially use my Bollinger Bands. And, I mean, if you've watched the, uh, was it the free trial day, I sort of go over my strategy, uh, the way that I do it. And it's essentially just uh, very, very simple. I do my own support and resistance. So, uh, you know, like I can see straight away, uh, horizontal lines, you know, you can see straight away support and resistance zone through there. So what I do is I go to higher timeframes and then I usually mark up some strong support and resistance on higher timeframes. Um, so, you know, I've got the, the easiest way to do it is just to look at the individual candles on higher time frames because if you're trading very, very short trades like I do, um, you just need that three minutes. And this is a four hour candle. So, what you do is you'd place it at the top of the current daily candle, um, at the bottom of the current daily candle. The price will probably never make it down there in this trading session. Uh, and then you can just find other points of uh, support and resistance, especially if you can find two touches or more or a few touches or more. So you're just trying to look for um, where price could currently go in, in the next, uh, you know, one hour of trading. So I've got another one on the four hour, just a point there and, and, and it could come down to there. And then I'm just looking for some touch points. So possibly through there. And then you can just work your way down to the one hour and then you can start getting a few more in here. So on the one hour there or there's a you know it's, it's either going to be the body of the candle or the wick wicks are usually more um consistent in terms of bounces uh so if you can get more wicks that's better uh even where it currently is at there and the reason why we do multiple right is because sometimes as you probably noticed yourself with trading is these markets say within our hour session will break through the current support and resistance zones if you've just got one marked up. So it's nice to know where it potentially will go to next or where it's going to bounce off from next. And that's why if in this session you mark up a couple, even if it goes through the current one, you kind of have a good idea as to where it's going to go to next. So the idea is to get as many touch points as possible, particularly at the end of weeks, but you can also use the, the candle breaks as well. Um, and then you just basically work your way down the time frames. Yeah, it's not 100%, but I've got a touch there and I've got a couple through here. Um, and you can work your way down the time frames. Then what I do is I come down to the five minute and um, possibly I, I adjust. Like if there's too many in there, you, you, you see that this has been one five minute move it's just gone bang so that is you know that's i like to see a couple of candles between um each move so that um so that i know that i'm gonna like i'm very bad at explaining this but um yeah i'd like to see a couple of candles between each um support and resistance, resistance zone um and there's a great way of um getting into this so what i would do is i uh, I take a look at um, where is the most solid resistance. So this here, I, this looks like it's consolidating a little bit. Obviously, you'd want to try and find a trend. The best way to find a trend is to go on Hourglass. Hourglass is exceptional for mm. finding trends. Um, so you jump on on Hourglass and you can find a trend. I sometimes trade consolidation as well. Um, but uh, you know, this is sort of the top zone of where it's currently come to. So I kind of like that area. If it made mm. it way, its way up here, it's probably going to bounce. Uh, where it's at right now is actually not that much going on through there. Mm. So I'll just delete that one. Um, and and another way that, to look at this is if you switch down to your one minute, then you can clearly see your wave patterns. So this was at the end of the that wick. Um, I don't know if that was the daily candle, um, but you can see here, mm heaps of support through there just by using that uh four it was a four hour candle at the bottom of the four hour candle it's automatically popped that right down there so if if price comes down to here 
I know for sure we're going to get at least a little bounce, right? Um, so by looking at that one minute is really helpful. And remember, it's a zone. So I've marked hit the very bottom of that wick, but it's actually a zone. It may not actually touch this. I think it will, but uh, it may not. And and so what you want to do is you have your zone, and the zone is usually um, your man. Look at that candle. So I would put that there as my zone and it's 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 usually finding like the bottoms or the tops mm. of the bodies or sort of an average of the bottoms of the tops of the bodies um and then you know if it comes back mm. down here then i'd probably enter that trade and even right now where it's heading to now um top I mean, here is yeah oh bitcoin <clears throat> so there's quite huge wicks here we've had it support on top of this one here and resist underneath it so i quite like that one so through there through there w formation on the one minute mm. cool and so you know you can see you can clearly see by jumping down to the one minute where it's been supporting and resisting and supporting and resisting and then you can switch back to your five minute and um you know even though this is actually one candle movement if it got up into the zone i would hit that for a sell uh, for a three minute sell and i've got a couple of things that i do based in terms of um trade timing as well so i'll usually make sure that i don't enter a trade until um ideally in in a new candle but um if it reaches the top of my zone within the last minute or two uh, of that previous candle then i i might hit that trade so there's a few things that i do differently but um but yeah, anyway, so I hope that oh, that's a very, very impromptu little, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just marking up, marking up charts and looking at zones. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, we're running over time here. I, any questions before we head out? Otherwise, uh, I wish I had mastered marking up charts before DLO. These are wonderful sessions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. We can do more on marking up charts. So, you know, if you guys, um, if there's interest. Yeah. In, let in us know what charts. you guys want help with, right? Because then we can bring it to these sessions and come back and kind of give you guys this information so that you can go back and practice it. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. we did trade from TradingView for a while there, but we found that Hourglass was just a super simple strategy because it already had your your zones yeah i think up it's for you especially if you're um, new it's just easy yeah as. it gives you the currency strength it gives you everything you need so but if you want us to do like next session if you guys want us to do marking up charts or if there's any specific requests uh just message us directly yeah. and if we get enough of those requests then we'll do it for you all awesome. right all right Have everybody oh i want to take a sell on this <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay all right guys okay <laughs> have a good one. Oh, there you go look at that quick formation Ooh. anyways all right yeah. Okay. <laughs> Time to call it. We're winning. We're in profit. Have a good one, guys. Bye bye. bye. Oh,